Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play DuckTales Remastered. In the last part, we went through the Transylvania stage and now it's time for the African Mines. Find Gyro. Our next stop's Africa and the center of the Earth. What treasure do you think you'll find there, Uncle Scrooge? Only the largest gem known to history, the giant diamond of the inner Earth. Hi, lads. This is the place. I can feel all those diamonds singing to me. <laughs> and it's a right pretty song, too. Gyro, I thought you said this winch was brand new. It was. It's an unbreakable diamond tether, Mr. McDuck. I made it myself. So long as you didn't use any of my diamonds to do the job. <laughs> What's all this hullabaloo? Your lunch break isn't for two hours yet. We heard voices down there, Mr. McDuck. Strange, g g ghostly voices. Nonsense. There aren't any v v v voices down there. <laughs> Whatever you say, Mr. McDuck. But your mine is haunted. You finish digging it. Oh, you want anything done, you've got to do it yourself. And believe me, if I hear voices down there, I'll give them a good talking to. Now you stay here, boys. I'm going to get to the bottom of this. The rock bottom, Mr. McDuck. This mine shaft goes down for miles. And thus, welcome to what's probably the easiest stage in the game on the whole. Uh, this is also one of the stages that is very easy to get a uh, health extension in. So if you're playing the game for the first time, this is actually a pretty good place to go. It's also easily the most linear level, without a doubt, because you always have to follow one path here. This old lift won't budge up, Scrooge. Looks like the key's missing. You don't think the ghost ran off with it, do ya? Look, if I hear one more word about this mine being haunted, I'll start haunting it myself. Because when you get down to it, Every other stage, yes, has an A to B path you need to follow at the end of the day getting to the boss fight, but along the way there's always a sub-objective that requires you to go basically at things in your own pace, be it the eight coins in the Amazon, getting the nephews in Transylvania, the Himalayas and the moon have their own thing going on, we'll see you later on. Out of the main five levels, this is the only one that's really just get to the end. And you know, I, I, in this game I find that a bit interesting because it, it, it shows that they weren't afraid to have some variation in the stage design, and I love it when games are like that. Now, something I really should go over this part is actually the trophy slash achievement list for the game. I'll do that after this next cutscene, though. Hey, you found the key! Did the ghosts have it? Oh, I'm telling you kids for the last time, there are no ghosts in this mine. I don't know about that, Uncle Scrooge. Something must have cut the tether line and broke the winch. And scared away those workers! I'll tell you what scared them away. Overactive imaginations. I'm not about to let a bunch of silly superstitions stand between me and the giant diamond of the inner earth. Now, man the controls and lower away, lads! I will say though, one uh, side effect of not having any real side stuff for us to go after uh, this is probably also the shortest out of the main five stages, because as you look at the timestamp, we're quite a few minutes shorter than we have been in the past. Mrs. Beakley, what are you doing here? I thought you might get hungry, Mr. McDuck, so I baked you a little something. You're worth your weight in gold, Mrs. Beakley. Uh, if you'll pardon the expression. Huh, of course. But I'll find my own way out, thank you very much. I have to say, but overall, Mrs. Beakley got a good upgrade in this game because she was only in a few stages in the original game. And she gave you infinite health, yes, but th 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 those extra lives are just more useful in the long run. Now, this is really the only section you have a lot of side stuff to go after because in this little vertical, not vertical, uh, horizontal section, there's not only all those chests, but it's also where our health extension is. This is the earliest health extension you can get in the game. And where is it? Well, you just had left. Looks like there's a wall there, but not so. 
by the way, in terms of the achievements for the game, I think in general there are 20. There's one for beating the intro stage, then one for beating each of the main five stages, bringing us up to six. There's one for beating the final stage in the game, more on that later. There's one for collecting $10 million in total. Uh, there's one for finding all the heart containers in the game. There's one for beating the game on hard, and then another for beating the game on extreme mode, which requires beating hard to begin with. There's one for unlocking every piece of art in the stage, which as you might remember, uh, can take a while. There's one for just buying a piece of art in the gallery. Uh, there's one which is a bit interesting in that in the Amazon section you need to enter either of the underground parts and climb up to the other side using only the pogo. Essentially, uh, say like at the very beginning of the Amazon, go underground and just pogo everywhere. Don't step. It's surprisingly hard to do. Uh, there's sink or swim which is diving into the money bin. Uh, there's one with destro that's destroying the statue in the temple section of the Amazon. Uh, there's one that's going to the gyro secret stage, which I can actually confirm it does need to be a 7 in the 10,000s part. I got that wrong last part. Uh, there's one that's defeating five enemies with one use of the invincibility coin. Uh, that's surprisingly hard to do, and I should note those coins only appear on easy or normal difficulty. Or medium, rather. So you, I, I want to say the easiest way to do that is to move left and right on the screen where enemies respawn quickly. Uh, there's one that's finding Mrs. Beakley in general, I believe, and then there's one for beating, uh, killing five enemies in a row with one pogo. Uh, you'll do that in the storyline no matter what, though. Either way, we need to go along that giant little U-turn section because we actually need to destroy those rocks in order to head down here. I think this stage also might have the most backgrounds, and I love this one in particular. I don't know why, but I, I, I just love waterlogged cavern aesthetics. I will say there is one thing about the state that can be kind of hard, despite me calling it easy earlier. It's that there are, at least in this middle section of the stage, quite a few ways to die instantly, be it due to just falling in the water, getting knocked back into the water, so on and so forth. There are a lot of uh, chances for death here. Thankfully, one thing I haven't really talked about is that Scrooge controls so well in this game that you don't really need to worry about it. Every movement you make feels like it's your own, not the game kind of just reacting to your movement, and it, it, it's, it feels like butter. It's wonderful. Mind you, it's a way forward game. I don't think I've ever played a way forward game where they didn't have good control. Shantae 1 can be a little bit stiff, but I'll at least say that's because it was on the Game Boy. Everything else they've done, mmm, delicious. Now, something I know for a fact happened after this game got released, but I'm having trouble finding anything on it for some reason. Unless this is some weird Mandela effect bullshit. Is that I recall after this game got released, WayForward got in trouble because within the files of the game there was an unused file for either the cutscene at the end of the Himalayas or at the end of the Amazon, where when a cutscene is happening, some of the like testing text came up and it was there was a swear in there. I forget exactly what it was. I don't think it was an F bomb or anything racist, obviously. But it was obviously a swear in a kid's game, rated E, so they got in trouble for it. And I'm forgetting what they said, but I know what happened. If anyone in the comments could help me remember what that was, that would be very much appreciated, because I recall that happening, and I want that to at least be noted somewhere in this video, or in the comments below. I know it happened, I recall the controversy, and I even remember seeing stuff talking about it on, like, Kotaku back in the day, but, yeah. To stop this confounded contraption. Now, what in the world do you suppose those are? Out of the way! Ouch. Oh, my aching tail feathers! Boys, did I not tell you to stay with Gyro? Well, we are. Uh, uh... Oh, I'm disappointed in you lads. It's dangerous doing here. Aw, uh, we just wanted to help Uncle Scrooge. Yeah. <laughs> Hush, lads. Did you hear that? What a Rudy! Those must be the voices that Miner was talking about. You boys go back the way you came. This is no place for children. Yes, Uncle Scrooge.
Also, for some reason, I always get hit at the end of that uh, minecart section in the last area. I don't know why. I just think, always think I'm supposed to jump out of the minecart at the end, though, when we're about to hit those rocks. That thing is defying gravity. No longer. Now, one thing I always did find a bit odd about DuckTales, and the, the current show uh, continues it, especially because the character's a lot more prevalent in it, is that Donald Duck is the only duck who sounds like Donald Duck. Everything else has more or less a much more clearer voice. Obviously, they have their own accents, like uh, Scrooge and a certain other one are Scottish and such, Miss Beakley's English, so on and so forth. But Donald's the only one who sounds like Donald. And they actually made a joke out of that in the current show, because I think towards the end of the season, or at least a recent episode, they gave him a voice changer. I think uh, Gyro shoved one down his throat. And suddenly he was voiced by Don Cheadle. Which, hilarious, by the way, but <laughs> it's bizarre hearing him not sound like Donald Duck at the same time. And if I recall, the current show actually drew some annoyance and criticism for Donald being so hard to understand. And admittedly, his voice is a bit harder to understand in the new series, at least at the start of it, compared to some of the other shows he's been in, but at the same time, that's so minor, considering Donald has a lot more screen time in the current show compared to the old one, yes, but the show is still very much centered on Scrooge, the three nephews, and Webby. And Mrs. Beakley, although she's gotten a lot more time in the current series compared to the old one as well, and she's awesome in the new series. She's... She's a former agent, and, like, secret agent, and it's, it, it's, it's hilarious. Either way, we're actually approaching the end of the level portion of the level here. Uh, once you get down to this third aesthetic in the background, there's not really much left in the level. In fact, they actually end up bringing some of the earlier enemies back for it. Uh, though it's interesting in that I think this is the only level which has a diamond, like, in the level design itself as part of it, as you can see here. And it actually does count for your money total, which is interesting. You! What's the meaning of all this racket? Out of the way, stranger. As the king of the Terraformians, I forbid anyone to interfere with the Great Games. Great Games? Stand back! You'll interfere with the Rowell. Ooh. Strange creature, you are disqualified. Yes, you're disqualified for unsportsmanlike conduct and roll and crash interference. Now see here, I own this mine, and I won't be bossed around by an overblown fuzzball. Step aside, I've got work to do. Oh, so you're the one causing all the ruckus up above. Well, I have heard enough. Okay, low-key, when I first heard the Terraformian King, I thought he was voiced by Smee from the old Peter Pan movie. Uh, but no, that's Frank Welker. That's, uh, that's Fred Jones, Scooby-Doo, Megatron, a lot of other people. Either way, the Terraformian King is a pretty simple boss. He rolls left to right until you hit him, in which case he'll roll all around the room, and afterwards he'll immediately jump into the background and toot his horn. His horn can do one of two things, depending on the color of the notes that come out of it as he uses it. If the notes that come out are blue, as you saw earlier, a bunch of Terraformians roll across the bottom of the screen and you need to pogo on top of them to avoid getting hit. However, he can also cause red notes to come at him. If that happens, several rocks fall from the ceiling and you need to avoid the drop shadows on the ground to avoid getting hit. On the whole, he's probably the most pattern-based boss in the game, barring the one Beagle Boy in the tutorial level. And he's also probably the easiest boss in the game because of that. He also, I think, might, I want to say he probably takes the least amount of hits barring one other boss fight we'll see later on. I love the way he's animated, though. Fantastic stuff there. Overall, the African Mines, probably the easiest level in the game out of the main five you can choose from. Easiest heart health extension on easy and medium, easiest boss fight, and there's no real object side objectives for you to go after, therefore making it just the most straightforward level. I can hold up under your assault no longer, stranger. What is it you wish from us? Well, for starters, stop these infernal games. You're causing earthquakes, scaring off my workers, and ruining my equipment. It's now impossible to mine for diamonds. Diamonds? Aye, diamonds. Like this one. Though the particular one I'm after is a fair bit bigger. Oh, you refer to garbage rocks. 
We have no use for garbage rocks. They're hard and sharp, and you can't roll on them at all. You don't say. <laughs> uh, uh, tell you what, uh, I'll do you a favor and haul away your uh, uh, garbage rocks free of charge. Just keep the earthquakes to a minimum, all right? Agreed. I am proud to announce that the Terraformians hereby welcome your garbage rock mining operation. Uh, here, you can start by getting rid of this one. Bless me, bagpipes! The giant diamond of the inner earth! Well, that all worked out fantastically, didn't it? <laughs> I, I want to say the, the Terraformians here, probably one of the few states that's also directly based off an episode from the show. I definitely know they show up in the uh, current series, although I don't think the king ever showed up. But you know, I, I like how authentic this is to the show in a lot of ways. There's a lot of detail in here that's from the show, be it enemies that show up in the show or otherwise. Also, I think the difficulty modifier actually depends not only on the difficulty, but the stage you're in, because I think each stage has its own. Gee, Uncle Scrooge, you mean there weren't any ghosts down there after all? That's right, Louie. It's as I told you, boys. There's a rational explanation for everything. Yeah, a whole kingdom of underground creatures who cause earthquakes as part of a game is a completely rational explanation. Uh, I... Never mind, boys. The point is, we made it back with a giant diamond of the inner earth and gained an entire diamond mine in the process. No, where to next, lads? Either way, with that, I'm going to need to end this off here. Thank you guys for watching, and in part five, we'll be heading to the next stage down on the list, the Himalayas. See you guys then.